Hey folks and welcome back to our channel here on YouTube, Dust Bowl Catholic. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. We are close to 100. Please get us over the hump and uh, we'll be able to reserve our name here on YouTube. But today is a little different. Um, doing a food video uh, because, uh, well, food's good. So it's a, it's a gift from God. So uh, please enjoy it. I'm uh, doing, a, doing something that usually takes a long time. Uh, and I actually cut it down pretty well, so check it out. So folks, as I said, this is going to be a birthday barbecuing session and what we're gonna do is brisket now if you go to a barbecue joint and get brisket they're gonna charge you 15 to 20 dollars a pound which is a lot of money or you can go to Sam's and buy one of those big old briskets for under five dollars a pound I want to say I got this one for 350 a pound so let's take a look so this brisket started out life as about a 16 pound brisket I trimmed every bit of fat off of it that I could without separating the point and the flat and then I rubbed it and I'm doing it Texas style so you can see some there's salt garlic pepper um, just a little bit of cayenne and then just for good measure I threw on some ground coffee just because and so after trimming we were down to about, I would say, 12 and a half pounds. Now, I'm going to do more of a hot and fast method, so I should be able to get this done in 8 to 10 hours, instead of the normal, you know, 12 to 13. Let's show you how we do it. We're using a regular chimney starter, which you can get at Sam's or Walmart or wherever. I got it filled with lump charcoal, natural lump charcoal, because it burns hotter. Even though it's a little slower, it burns hotter. And then I've got it stacked on top of two decent logs that are nice and dry with a lot of exposed wood. And you get it started. You know, you start, you put your newspaper up under there, light it on fire, and then I put a couple of extra in between those logs just to give it a little extra fuel, get it going good. So what this does is not only do you get your first bed of coals going, but you're starting your logs at the same time and you have that much more fuel to start when you start putting your other logs and such in there. So, we got finally got this started, a little wet this morning, and uh, we'll let it do its thing for a good, oh, 20, 30 minutes. So let's talk a little bit more about meat preparation. So, a lot of people are gonna say, you cut all the fat off of it, it's gonna dry out. No, it's not. We're gonna, we're gonna smoke it uncovered until we get the bark that we want and then yes a lot of people are gonna gripe about this but I am gonna wrap it in foil there's a reason behind this you'll see later but when I get a brisket and this is the key I do this with lots of meat two days before I'm gonna use it I will trim it I will rub it and then I'll put it on the sheet pan with paper towel and then I put it in the fridge and I do sort of a mini dry age session on it. So it gets two days in the fridge with that dry, cool air, drawing out a little bit of the moisture on the inside. And then also it gets, it gets a bit of a, a pellicle, you know, almost kind of like a skin on it, which helps the bark to form later on. It also kind of creates a barrier for any of the juices that develop on the inside from coming out. So. As I said, we got about 12 and a half pounds here. It's gonna be fun. All right, so you can see the flame shooting out the top. You got some good hot coals going on there. They're pinging. Now, not all of them are gone. That's gonna give us a little fuel for later. So, it is time to dump. Let's do it without burning ourselves. Looking good. Cooking with fire. 
something mainly about this. Also something very casual. So here we go. So now we've got those logs under there that are already started. I'm going to start hand feeding. I'm going to put one big chunk just to give it plenty of fuel to work on. Uh oh, there we go. All right, give it plenty of fuel. So one big chunk to get it started. And we're going to throw some smaller chunks that have a lot of exposed grain on them. That'll get started real good. So, easy to kind of pile stuff up real good here. Got some fuel started there. I'll put one in there. So they can get started. Find another one with some exposed grain. Here's another one. All right. That will be roaring soon we'll be cooking. Here's what we're using today. It is certainly overkill for the normal backyard cook, especially when you're only doing one brisket. Um, this is actually my uncle's smoker and it works very well. I used it to feed about 60 people for our Christmas party at work. And uh, it is very still this morning. There's almost no wind. So it's having a little time drawing, but you can see that smokestack's puffing pretty good, even though we have a little bit coming out the front and the way it works is we've got our fire down here in the small box and it'll draw out the smokestack over there and I'm going to start with our brisket over here on the cool end next to the smokestack so it gets plenty of smoke as it comes along and what I'm looking for is about 200 to 250 degrees over here on the cool end now at any one time the hot end is going to be at least 100 degrees higher, so we're talking 350 or so. So, we'll put the brisket down here until we get the bark we want. Then we will wrap it and put it at the hot end. And by keeping it down here on the hot end, the brisket cooks faster than if you would normally just keep it over here. You know, it's the equivalent of putting it in your oven inside, except you're not you're still using wood, which means it costs less because there are trees everywhere in Oklahoma. Unless you live in the Panhandle. I've been up there. So, like I said, time and not as much money. $60 altogether, you're going to have about $300 worth of brisket. Alright folks, so the fire is running good. The cold side is up to just over 180 degrees and that's your danger point anytime you're cooking meat you want it to be above 180 degrees wherever you're cooking it that way you don't get the nasties growing in there so we're up to temp the meat is out by the smoker it's time to put it on all right so here we go we just got it on there <clears throat> you'll notice i put the fat or the point end toward the fire so it can take more heat. It's got a little bit more stuff to break down on it. So that's why we put it towards the heat. Now, to quote Aaron Franklin, the Austin barbecue master, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So what we're gonna do is close this up and let it go for two to three to four hours. Probably around every two hours, I'll check it just to see how the bark looks. And once we get the bark where we want to go, and we'll probably hit the stall, I'll wrap it up and we'll move it to the hot end. <clears throat> but between now and then, and after we wrap it, the only thing we are using is wood on this thing. You know, unlike your pellet smokers, unlike your uh, Memphis style stuff, we are not using charcoal other than that first chimney that we used to get it started. See you in about two hours. All right, folks, it's been about two hours. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. See how red it's getting on there? We got good smoke and good heat going today. 
That is exactly what we're wanting to see. We're using oak today, so it's gonna have a little redder hue. Louder. And we're actually running a little hotter than I thought we were going to. We're running uh, 250, 275 down on this end, uh, which is just fine. That just means we're getting a bark that much faster. But there's almost no wind today, which is an anomaly here in, Amer in Oklahoma. So I have that stack wide open. And I have the intake wide open so we can get that draw moving. And it's actually working pretty well today. So just keep feeding it the wood and we'll check it again here in another couple hours. All right, folks, so the brisket has been on for about five hours. Let's take a look at it. That is beautiful. Is that a good crust we got going on there? That is called bark, and it's beautiful. So, we're going to take a temperature reading. Put it in the fattest portion that we can. You can see some of that, some of that fat's pilling up on the end. Let's see what we're running. Turn our temperature on. All right, we're running about 154, 152. So we are almost to the stall. Now briskets will hit a certain temperature and stay there for hours. It's called the stall, and that's when it's breaking down all the goodness inside of there. And you have to push through the stall and get to about um, 205 is what we're trying to get to. So here's the other part. We are going to wrap this brisket and throw it up on the hotter end. But the reason why is because we are making this a one pot meal. I'm gonna put it on this bed where I've got some mushrooms, turnips, parsnips, onions, all kinds of good stuff. Stuff you would put under a roast. And then I threw some Worcestershire, salt, pepper, and garlic, and a little bit of chicken stock. You could use beef stock if you wanted. And we're gonna put it right on top of there. And we're gonna put foil over it all and put it over on the hot side next to the fire. That right there, folks, is a thing of beauty. And as it continues to cook, all those beautiful juices are gonna run down into that bed of veggies. And then once it's all done, we'll pull it out, we'll be able to slice it up, and we've already got our veggies as our side. And you can use the Jew or, and make either a gravy or just keep it straight and use it as, as just to dip things in. This is gonna be beautiful. All right, folks, we've got a double layer of foil on there. We've moved it from the back end to the hot end next to the firebox over there we have our probe inserted into the thickest portion and the thickest portion is still towards the fire and we've set our alarm at 205 so that we know when we're good to go so now our job is to close this up don't look at it if you're looking you ain't cooking and keep that fire going until we hit 205 Okay folks, so this brisket has been on for about seven hours and as you can see it is over 200 degrees internal temp, which means it's in the goodness zone. And as you can see we have a whole pan of yummy goodness. Another thing you can do is just take this and start poking it. If it goes in and out with just barely any give that that means you're done all right so all we got to do is wrap this up I'm gonna put it back down on the cool end because I've got a lot of fire left and we're just gonna keep this warm until people show up all right folks so as you can see we've let the fire burn down for about an hour but that keeps some good heat on the stuff There's nothing going wrong in here still all buttoned up in there staying nice and warm and toasty I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna show you a little trick. So what we have here is just a basic ice chest. And what you can do is put some towels on the bottom, put your meat or whatever wrapped up inside of it, and then put another towel on top of it. 
close the lid and then let it rest for something this big you're gonna to want to let it rest for at least 30 minutes I'm gonna do it for an hour today and then we'll slice it up and have some goodness all right folks it has rested for about an hour it's time to do the opening and get that meat out of there so we can start cutting it up you have to be careful because there's gonna be steam in there even though it's been sitting for an hour it's still really hot Now the tricky part, we gotta get the meat out of there so we can slice it up. You see the crust on the top stayed. The whole thing is bendy, that's great. Take it right over here. And now we have all this goodness here, just like a roast that you would make in your oven we have side dishes and juice and all kinds of good stuff there. all right so leave that there and then you have to get out the obligatory ancient electric knife it makes old people happy so if you look real close the lines on the meat are running this way on this piece and then you have this other piece up here that's fattier that runs this way so you want to go across those lines. So they're running this way, we're going to cut this way. So here we go. All right, test it. See, it's still hot. Can't really grab it very good. And it should bend right over on its own when you grab it. And there you are. Just barely tug on it, it should break. There we go. Beautiful smoke ring, plus your crust. That's gonna be good stuff right there. Hey folks, I hope you liked that video. It's a little different from what we normally do, but hey, it's fun and uh, food's always good. So uh, if you'd like, I'm gonna have some videos pop up right here with other stuff for us to look at and watch more of our normal kind of thing and right over here is a subscription button please use it we are almost to 100 so we can reserve our name here on YouTube as always we'll see you next time on the Dust Bowl Catholic